Have you ever entered a stock and you exit for a loss, but the second you exit, the stock goes all the way to your profit target? Then chances are you most likely don't understand liquidity. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to spot imbalances in the market to be a profitable trader. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to identify liquidity imbalance while trading. Now, this is a very, very important video because most traders, they really just look for those strategy videos like I've been talking about to you guys, but they don't really look at the technical side of trading, right? They don't actually understand what's going on on the chart. They just see their setup and so they execute, but they don't understand the backside of why that works. So in this video, we're going to be talking about liquidity and it's very important that you have this in your toolbox to be a profitable trader. So let's get into it. The concept of imbalance. Imbalance occurs when only one participant is actively trading in the market. This leads to insignificant price action. The concept of imbalance is what moves markets and without understanding this concept you can truly not become a consistent trader. Now with this slide what I'm trying to help you guys understand is why imbalance is so important. There's buyers and sellers that make up the market right before that really all you see is a chart in front of your screen but when you actually add the buyers and sellers that's how the stock moves right you cannot move a stock without participants in the market. So when their stock is let's say in a range phase that just essentially means that buyers and sellers believe that the stock is at a fair value. When you see a big move to either the upside or downside on a stock, this means that buyers and sellers have an imbalance and they believe that the stock's value should be something much either higher or lower depending on if they're buying or selling that stock. And in the most simple terms possible, that's essentially all that moves the markets. So identifying liquidity balance. Liquidity imbalance happens when there is a substantial difference between the quantity of buy and sell orders in the market. This situation can create an opportunity for traders to take advantage of the market movement, which sometimes can be sharp and fast. So we're going to talk about this specific diagram in a second, but I really just want to show you guys that simple concept I was talking about. We see a range where we see a high and low and the stock is in between this range. All that simply means is that buyers and sellers believe that the stock is in a fair value. Once we move the stock away from one of these levels or break one of these levels, this specifically means that in this example, let's say buyers believe that the stock's price should be higher than what it is in this range. And therefore, more buyers are going to jump into this specific trade. As we can see, this trade didn't work out for the buyers and actually ended up working for the sellers and we'll talk about why it didn't work for the buyers and why this was a very, very easy liquidity grab for the sellers. So how do you spot liquidity imbalance? So there's three simple steps I'm going to break down for you. Number one is a range period. So analyze the market for a range period. So stocks that are in between a specific range. Now this can be on any time frame realistically. However, for me, since I'm a day trader, I like to go on the lower time frames to look for this. And all you want to do is just identify where the stock is ranging. Once you see the stock is in a range, the second step you're going to use is manipulation. Keep a close eye on candlesticks, especially when it starts to show an imbalance in the number of buyers to sellers. So all this means is in that previous example, like we saw, once we broke out of that range period, once we broke out of it, we saw the stock moving to the upside. Now, this upside might not actually be the full move, and a lot of people are going to buy into that upside move. A lot of buyers are going to enter in because they think that the stock just broke out of the range period. As a professional trader, you need to understand that you do need a little bit more confirmation. I'm not a breakout trader, therefore I don't play those manipulation moves. I simply wait for the real move or the bigger move to occur and that's when I enter personally. And that's exactly what step number three is, the real move or distribution. Now we look for sharp moves and price action where price moves quickly and steeply in one direction. In the previous example, we saw how the price moved to the downside after the manipulation move. So let's talk about how we could actually spot that in that previous example. Now, this is a very simple textbook example of how to spot imbalance, right? So all we see here is range, right? Once again, buyers and sellers believe that the stock is at a fair value. Once we broke out of the range, this is manipulation. Now let's talk about what happens in manipulation. When we broke out of that range phase, buyers step in very heavy here to break it out of this one side because what buyers thought here is if we break new high of day more people will enter into the stock now what they don't understand is sellers could easily bring the stock right back down 
Why? This is because when breakout traders enter into here, most people, once they break out of this range, they're going to also be taking profit. So you need to understand the backstory of why this is happening. People are taking profits after breaking into new high of day. And then we also have new breakout buyers entering at the same level. Now, unfortunately, when this happens, when the people taking profit actually do exit and the sellers are also shorting the stock, the buyers aren't strong enough to actually hold the stock above the range. So once we break back down below into the range, this is when the sellers become extremely strong because they realize that buyers aren't strong enough to actually break out of this range. So let's just enter in with more size. When once this happens, we simply break below the previous range low as well. And we actually make a full move to the downside. Now, where we would want to enter is not into either of these breaks of the range, but rather a retest into that range. The reason I like to enter on the retest of ranges is because it actually gives me a little bit more confidence to enter the trade because it shows that hey we did break the high we came back and we broke the low and when we come back to retest that range sellers simply just want to add more into their position and as long as we can stay below the range this stock is going to move to the downside this also gives me the best risk to reward because if we just enter right back into the range my stop loss can be extremely tight here due to the fact that we are in a range market right so this risk to reward wise is also a very very good entry because of the imbalance so how can we use imbalance for entry criteria we have three steps once again number one confirm the trend so ensure the imbalance confirms the larger trend to avoid false signals number two patience is key right so wait for the imbalance to occur before entering the market i've talked to a lot of students that try to use imbalance trading to actually become profitable but the problem that i see time and time again is they don't have the patience to wait for the setup this setup can take time especially depending on what time frame you're trading on some people like to trade on the daily time frame some people like to trade on the four hour the one hour and those larger time frames right they can take hours to days just to set up for you to enter the stock and if you don't have the patience necessary to actually wait for your setup to occur you will be losing more trades so it's very simple wait for your setup to occur and wait for that imbalance to actually happen so once the imbalance occurs what i like to do is verify the imbalance and i do that by simply waiting for a retest and once i do enter the stock i hold until my profit target or stop loss i do not exit before that simple scenario now, a lot of people, they do not wait for the retest. You know, you can be a breakout trader and you can trade it that way as well. Me personally, I'm not a breakout trader and how I like to identify liquidity and use it. I like to use it with the retest strategy. So now that we understand liquidity and balance, let's go look at some real examples to really understand how imbalance works in the real markets. Here we are on a real example on SPX. Now, what do we see for range on the range side here? We see a high of the range and then we also also see the low of the range right here. Now, this is the range that we want to break. In our scenario, we have two specific examples that could happen for the liquidity grab on this example. The first scenario that could occur is we break to new highs, right? This would be the manipulation phase. We re-enter back into new lows. We have a retest on that previous low of the range, and then we make the real move down all the way to the downside like so. That's the first example that could happen. This the second example that could happen is we break down first, we come back into the new high, and then we retest the highs to simply move on higher. Now, out of these two scenarios, notice how when we do play the range or if we're playing the liquidity, right, we have two scenarios. We don't really have a bias of what's going to happen on the stock until we break one side and get that confirmation. This is extremely important. Make sure to go watch my how to determine bias. That was two videos ago, I believe. And I made that video to show you guys how to go into the day with bias. Now, if you have a bias in mind as well with seeing this range, that'll really help you increase your probability to win the trade as well. However, in this example here, we have no bias. So let's just play out the trade and see how we can actually determine the liquidity. What do I see? Now, this is a very clear example of just the range and we broke to the upside here. Now, this could be manipulation or the stock could actually continue moving higher. Now, what we want to see is what's going to happen. We're not going to take any single trade until we see our specific setup until then right we're really just looking at the chart and ensuring that this is indeed manipulation and not just distribution we're just really ranging in between that and we break right back below 
straight back down below to that pre-market low level. What does this show us? This shows us that this was indeed manipulation and the stock's real move is going to occur once we break that pre-market low. Now, there is indeed a chance that we break pre-market low and we never get that retest, right? So we just go straight from here all the way down and we never get that retest back into that pre-market low. What happens in that scenario? Well, it's really simple you do not trade you do not trade if that happens it was a great setup for a breakout however it wasn't a retest setup and therefore there is no reason for you to trade that setup it's not in your playbook a lot of traders will fomo into these type of trades without letting the full trade set up right our a plus setup would be a retest just entering into that breakout is not an a plus setup for us so let's play out this trade and see what happens Okay, so lucky for us, we did break below this pre-market low and we're actually also retesting, right? We retested that pre-market low as well because we came back into that range and then we made another very weak candle or a strong candle for sellers, but a weak candle for buyers, right? Look at how much sellers came in when we try to get back into that range to show that the stock does want to move to the downside. So how would I enter this trade? The way I would enter this trade is I would have my stop loss a little bit of above this previous candle. This is because if we do break this candle again and go back into the range, there's a very likely chance that we just range all day. And since we are momentum traders, we don't wanna wait in that range period for so long. And therefore this is going to be a quick momentum trade to the downside. For my profit target, I'm gonna use previous day high. And this is just due to the fact that this is the next place buyers would wanna buy the stock at a discounted value. So if we enter into this trade here, this would give us a risk to reward of about 4.1 points. Let's enter enter into a short position and let's see exactly what happens on this trade on SPX. And just like so, we just hit our profit target here for $933. We're going to flatten out that position there for $933 on SPX by simply using the retest of that previous range and understanding how to trade liquidity. So I hope this video helped clear how to identify liquidity for you guys. If it did, make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Make sure to join the waitlist in the description for my upcoming mastermind. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video.